Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to learn about Android networking. We are going to use a library called Volley to see how we can connect an Android application to a network. So I've done a tutorial like this before. Last time I did it we were connecting to a MySQL server using XAMPP. So that was a server that was on our local machine. Today we'll do something different. We're going to connect, connect to an API. So it's going to be a service that is live on the internet and I'm going to show you how you can get data that is on the internet and present it in your application. This particular tutorial will be very brief. We're going to just see the very basics of the concept and perhaps in later tutorials we'll build up on what we learn from this. So as you can see I have a brand new project. It's called Volitest and I've opened up my Gradle file. This one right here not the one above. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to bring in Volley, and to do that we simply copy the dependency in our Gradle file. And there it is, I already had it copied. So it is this com.android.volley colon volley colon 1.1.1. And once you do that, make sure you sync it. I don't need to do that since I already had it in my project. But as that's happening, let's talk about why we're using Volley for a moment. So there are very many libraries that you can use for networking in Android. Libraries such as OKHttp, OK Retrofit, and so on and so forth. Now, depending on your purpose and what you're trying to do, it's good to look at these individual libraries and see what pros and cons they have. I like Volley particularly because, especially for tutorials, it's a very straightforward library to use. The steps to go from bringing it in, which we've just done, to actually getting data from, the, from whatever service it is you're using are very straightforward. So it's very good for learning, but aside from that, it has very many advantages and very many pros that can be leveraged when you're making a project. So I encourage you for the sake of your own knowledge, go look at all the different libraries and Volley included. Look at their pros and just see why they are such uh, good libraries for, for uh, networking. As a brief primer, I will just mention a few things about Volley. First of all, Volley is operated by Google. I wanted to say created by Google, but I believe it was created by a, a set of developers before Google decided to take over it. In any case, now Google operates uh, is in charge of Volley, which means it has support from the company itself, so you can be guaranteed that it will always be up to date. Aside from that, Volley is great at caching. So briefly, because I don't want this to be a, to a theory tutorial, Imagine if you brought in an image which we know will be very, uh, which we know are very heavy pieces of data. If you brought an image in from the network, from the internet, say, and then perhaps you rotated your screen so your activity was created again, and that means the code to bring in the image gets run again. Now, doing multiple network calls like that, it wastes a lot of resources and it's really bad practice. Volley allows you to uh, rather automatically caches data. So before making the network call again, Volley will first check if that data that's being requested for exists in its cache and it will present it first. So you can see this will be very advantageous. It will make your code, rather your application run much faster than a different solution than Volley. So this is just a few, uh, a rather brief look into why it's a good library and why I like to use it, at least in the tutorials. Not to say that you shouldn't look into other libraries. In fact, I highly encourage, after doing this primer lesson, go look at different libraries for networking. All right, anyway, moving on. So by now, I'm sure your, your library has synced in your own project. So let's move on to actually creating the app. First, of course, we'll go to our activity main.xml. Let's close others. And let's discuss what this application is actually going to do. So, we want to make an app in which a person will put in a number, the user will put in any number they want, and they will get back a fact about that number. So for example, I could put in the number two as my input, and I would get back 
2 is the lowest prime number and the only even prime number, some such thing. So the particular use case, actually I came up with it because I found a very interesting API on the internet that provides facts for just as the one I've just said. You put in a number, you get a fact. And we'll look at that in a moment. So let's design our very simple XML. First of all, I'm getting rid of the constraint layout in favor of a scroll view, like so. And within my scroll view, I will have a linear layout. So why am I using a scroll view? Because these facts, we cannot control their length. One, it might be a very short statement, like two is the lowest prime number, or it might be a paragraph that runs for quite a while. So we want to be able to scroll through in case the text is quite large. All right, so remember, if you're using a scroll view, it can only have one child, right? So for example, uh, in, in this app of ours, we will need for an edit text, as you're about to see, a uh, text view for the fact itself, and a few buttons. We can't start putting them one by one in here. That won't work for scroll view. So we have to put in another layout, in this case, a linear layout, and we can put all those things inside the linear layout. So like I said, first we can have an edit text and width will wrap content, height will wrap content, ID of, oops, ID of number, text size, let's say 30 dp or actually even bigger, 40 dp. All right, I think we'll leave that at that for now. Oh, and hint, we'll just put a zero. We need that, we can have our text view. So we're keeping this very simple. Wrap content and ID is fact. I'll copy these two, size will be the same, and this instead of hint will be text. And the text for now, just as a placeholder, will write fact text goes here. So we're not too interested in the design of the app, I just want to show the concept. But still, for the sake of making it look a little good, let's put some uh, gravity. So layout gravity will be center, gravity will be center. Layout gravity controls the widget itself, this, the position of the widget. Gravity controls the, the data within the widget. In this case, the text within the widget makes that centered as well. All right, anything else we need? Color. Oops. Color will be Actually, I should select this from the design window. Let's go here. Ah, and I can see I didn't put orientation, but I'll do that. So go here and go to color. I'll search for it. Text color, and I want black. Okay, it's giving me the hex code. I thought it would give me a, uh, a representative text, but that's totally fine. In which case, I'll just change it like so. So those last two digits were for alpha, and it's, it's giving me double zero. That means it's transparent, and I obviously don't want that. So there's my black as a hex code, just six zeros. And like I said, I didn't put orientation, so let's go ahead and do that. Orientation will be horizontal. Also, let's give it padding of 20 dp. And we can take a look. Oh, sorry, not horizontal, vertical. There we go. And let's center the edit text. So layout gravity, like I said, will control 
the widget itself, moving it to the center, while gravity controls what's within the widget. So now the zero, although it's it, it was centered anyway, now it will be centered. Okay, now let's throw in some buttons. So the first button, wrap content, text. By the way, you're welcome to do your design using the design window. I just prefer it this way. So the first one will be to get the fact ID. Let's say f uh, fetch. The next button ID this time will be random and as you can imagine we'll be using this one to get random numbers. And then finally let's copy this time. So this will be reset, reset, and of course this will be used to reset our edit text to zero and our, rather our edit text to nothing, that zero is a hint, not a number, and our text here to whatever we choose, I will not end up using fact text do, goes here. That is not good user experience. Okay, let's put some gravity. As well as margin, so they are spaced out a bit. Layout margin uh, 10dp. Mm, 20dp, let's try 20dp, see how that looks. Once again, not too concerned about the look. Okay, maybe it's a bit much. There, that is good enough. So, this is our very simple, uh, our very simple design. One final thing I will do is you can see that the edges of this thing show us that it's a bit to the left. Maybe it wouldn't even be noticed once it's run, but always good to take care of these little things. So this is the, le the linear layout itself that is shifted to the left like this. And as I have just shown, to control the uh, position of a widget, it's layout gravity and center. Oh, rather, layout gravity and center horizontal so center would have done well what you saw it takes it to the absolute center center horizontal will give it this horizontal uh, it'll keep it at the top but in the center of the of the screen okay so that's it that's all i'll do for the design anything that needs to change we can do later let's now go over to our main activity dot jab we can close that and of course, as soon as you finish designing, you must connect those widgets. So, the first one is the edit text, edit text number. Next, we have our text view. Text view fact. And then we have three buttons. So, button... reset and before reset we had the random number is equals to find view by id r dot id dot I don't think I gave that an idea actually. Let me check. Ah, number. I did. Number, and then I'll duplicate that five times. So, 
fact and fact. And finally, we set. All right then, let's go ahead and give these, at least the first one, fetch to begin with an on-click listener. So set on-click listener, new on-click listener. Okay, so now in here, we can actually start using our volley. We can actually start connecting to the network. So at this point, when the fetch is being clicked, the user has put in the number that they want and they can now get a fact in return. Okay, now, at this point I can put in my comment, which will tell us exactly what we're about to do. So, to use volley, first we must Create a request queue. Second, if we have a request queue, you will you may imagine that it's going to hold requests. So create a string. That's the kind that we will use. We'll use a string request. And then finally. Simple as that. Three steps, and you've used and you've uh, successfully implemented volley. You create a request queue, a string request, and then you add the string request to the request queue. So let's immediately just get into that. Request queue, and I'll just name it queue, is equals to volley dot new request queue, and it wants context, and the context is main activity dot this. Second, string request queue. Request is equals to null for now. And finally, queue dot add request. Simple as that. So we'll actually create the request. It has a bit of work that and a few things that I'll teach. But as soon as you've done these three steps, you've successfully gotten your your data that you're looking for from whatever network it is okay so before i move on we'll do two things first since we're accessing a network we need permissions and here as you can see in my android manifest i've already added my permission but let me remove it so i can show you you simply start typing users permission you'll get it from the menu and then you simply start typing internet and as you can see here it's the first one you select that and you put your closing uh, your closing tag so a slash and a closing pointy bracket and it's as simple as that next thing let's actually go take a look at this api i've been talking about so open up your browser and google number facts api And it should be the first link, numbersapi.com. So when you go into that, they've given a very nice explanation and a decent UI to show you how it works. It tells you about the API reference. It gives you a few nice usage examples and so on and so forth. But in a nutshell, all you do is you go to the, you type in the domain and then you type in the number. So for example, four, and you get Four is the number of legs most furniture has, and indeed that is true. Two, two is the first magic number in physics. And also if you refresh the link, you may have to do it a few times, but if you refresh it, you will get a different fact. So two is the number of stars in a binary star system, and so on and so forth. Notice again, 
it's a greater amount of text. It's more text than the previous one. So that's uh, why we use the scroll view. Okay, so that's how the API works. You put in the domain and then you give it, oops, what did I, oh, that's fine. You put in the domain and you put in the number that you're working with, simple as that. So now let's go and use it. So string request request is equals to null. Now let's get rid of the null and say new string request. And what I'll do is I'll open this up. The string request takes four parameters. And once again, I'm happy to make a a comment block that's for volley and then this is for so first it needs a method these are just the parameters, or rather the arguments, now that we're using them. These are the arguments that you put in. A URL, a response listener, so what to do when you actually get a response. And an error listener. And it's as simple as that. So the method. There are two uh, main ones. There's more than two, but there are two main ones that are usually used in networking uh, networking applications, simple networking applications at least. And those are, let's say, method dot. Sorry, I'll start with the request dot method dot post. So these are the different ones that are available. But post is a very common one that you'll use as well as get. Those are the two very common ones. Okay, so let's keep it at get for now. We won't go into what those two mean. Feel free to do your own research. I may mention it in a later tutorial, but for now simply know that get is the one that is needed when you're just getting information. Post is needed when you're actually sending information fast and then getting a response. So maybe you're sending a username and a password and then getting the response of those with the correct username and password. You're now logged in, something like that. URL. So we simply come back to our browser, copy that, and the URL is required as a string. So you paste that there. Notice that it gave me my HTTP. You have to have that. You have to have the protocol, otherwise it will not work. Okay? For now, I'll leave that to there. I'll change it in a moment. Then, new response listener. So I'll just create the object directly in there, and it will give me this block of code by default. Let me do that once more in case it was too fast. Start typing new, and then response.listener should be the first one. And when you press enter, it appears. We'll leave it empty for now, so that I can create my new Again, just start typing error, should be the first one. You want the error listener, and there it is. Okay, so the response is this. This is the response that we get. In our browser, it shows up like so. In our application, it shows up how we want it to show up. So how do we want it to show up? We want it to show up inside this text, text view. All right, so. What did I call it? Fact. I believe I called it fact. So fact dot set text to response. Very simple. And then fact dot set text to error dot to string. And maybe I can concatenate. error like so all right so for the response for my response we got this method on response and it passed in string response once again string response just represents all of this yeah that is the response and it is held within this variable string response and now we can do whatever we want with it and for us all we want is to just set the text so set the text to in this case 
two is the lowest channel, etc., etc. For the error listener, what got we got this method, this overridden method on error response, and it was given uh, a, rather the parameter is volley error error. So if something goes wrong, if the, there's an error while volley was trying to do its job, this uh, this volley error error carries our that that whatever the error was, and we can simply turn it to string with error dot to string, and show it to the user. Okay, now we can get rid of that and concatenate uh, number. I'll say user number. We haven't created it yet, but as you can imagine, user number will be int user number is equal to number our edit text dot get text dot to string a bit of okay there's an error here let's see what it is oh okay this is going to give us a a string and we need it to be an int so very simply we can say integer dot pass int and then we terminate there and we take all of this get rid of the extra termination and we post it in there so there we go so we're keeping this application simple but as you can imagine that there there is need for some error handling right because somebody may come in here and put letters or put their name or put a number like one as o n e something like that so some error handling would be needed for now we'll just leave it since we're just doing a simple example and so here we've concatenated our user's number. All right, then let's run it and see what happens. All right, here's the app running. So let's go ahead and put a number. And I'm going to put 67. And when I press get fact, let's see what happens. Okay, it says 67 is the highest two digit odd number not presently designating any highway in the interstate highway system of the United States. Fascinating. And it has worked wonderfully. So Here's our scroll view, again, doing exactly what we expected. That text was larger than what we could have, what we may have planned for. And by putting the scroll view, it fits without any problem. We have our fact. So this has worked very well. Maybe a bit of user interface design we can change, but again, that's not our priority. Let's try it once more with just seven. So I'm going to put seven. All right, let's hit get fact. And seven is the number of days in a week. Indeed it is. Let's hit get fact again and see if we can get something different. Seven is the approximate number of years in the lifespan of Irish wolfhound dogs. Good Lord, that is, that is very few. Either way though, there is our app running and it's working perfectly at least as far as the parameters we set go so the next thing we'll do and we'll do this in a different video is to now work with this random and with this reset button but having seen the the way volley works perhaps these are something you guys can do as a challenge that's it thank you very much i'll close it there